right-clicking the boxes. Yeah, just right-click in the box and make a transition. So awesome. look, I'm gonna select here my character and uh, I'm gonna go here to my scene. And what we're gonna see is that automatically I'm gonna play one. Let me just make the screen here a little bit bigger so we can see. Okay, yeah, and then we're gonna put this to the animator and select my characters. Press play, what we're gonna see is we're gonna see the run animation, automatically goes to the jump animation. So he's running, then he jumps, and then he runs, and yeah. then he jumps, and it yeah. transitions back between the yeah. two automatically. So, but what I want to do is, I don't want that uh, automatically plays run, automatically jumps. I only want that it plays jump when I click mm -hmm. the jump button, basically. Makes sense. Yeah, so look, we can say here, okay, well, we're going to trigger something. So we have the parameter setting in the bottom corner there. Yeah, and I'm going to say here jump, okay. And we're making a trigger type. Yeah, and that's actually a very good question if you say, well, what's actually a trigger or a boolean, okay? If you do a boolean, and you say uh, to this is true, then you have to write in code uh, later on the act A, not uh, uh, false. Mm -hmm. If you do a trigger, it will automatically just do the opposite. It will one time true and automatically back to false. So it's similar to a boolean, and you handle it like a boolean. Yeah. But you just have to set it true once, and as soon as it does that animation, as soon as it triggers it, it automatically sets it back to false again. Yeah. So what we see is here the uh, run to jump, okay? Here, we're gonna say, well, that only will happen when jump is true. When will I go from jump to run? On exit time. Does that mean like, play the animation jump and mm -hmm. automatically goes back to run? So no matter what, we do the full animation for the jump and then we just go back to running. Yeah. Well, when I press play and I press jump, okay, uh, just by accident uh, it worked. Oh, no, no, it oh, works. No, it works. The script already yeah. had the code yes, for that. Yes, the code has already added to it. So when I press play here, look here, click and I jump, play animation, and it goes down. Okay, how does that work? We're gonna just look at the script here quickly. So we have the script attached to it here. The cooking show magic of the script already being yeah. finalized. <laughs> That's really simple, what you only have to do is here. Set the trigger, jump. So anim.setTrigger, yeah. jump. So what's the anim part here? Here on, before my game starts, I actually go to the component animator. Mm -hmm. So it goes here to, and here in my character. So that's just a local variable to that object that references the animator component. Correct. So it goes to the animator component, here the controller, okay, opens this controller and goes to this parameter and activates this one time to true. Mm -hmm. And that's why we're gonna go from run to jump. Excellent. Yeah. Pretty simple. So what we're gonna do is, now look here, I'm gonna take the camera and I quit, I make the camera a child of my character. Okay, press play. And then my character is jumping, oops. So now the camera's moving just because we made it a child of yep. the character. Because that way the X, Y position is relative to the parent object, just like everything else. So yep. as the character is moving, the camera's gonna move in proportion to that. Yeah, but uh, I made it a little bit more uh, interesting here. What I wanna do is with my camera, I only want to, to happen when my character comes here in the screen, like comes in, runs, and then starting from here, my camera will follow. Okay, mm -hmm. so what we're gonna do, we're gonna take here, like set here, and I'm gonna create an empty game object. Okay, I place it here, I'm gonna say, starting from here. So I'm gonna make that object a child of my character. And what I'm gonna do, we're gonna say, uh, reset position. So it perfectly matches there with that. Mm -hmm. okay. So it's in the exact same position as the character. Yeah. I'm gonna take my camera and make a child of that. Okay. So then I can set, with the moment the, my character, uh, is the same value as that object mm -hmm. or higher than follow the... So, so you move those around. So you have at the top hierarchy, you have the character and the game object that you set to be the exact same X, Y, Z position of the character. Yeah. And then a child of the empty game object is the camera. Yeah. So uh, what we're going to do, I have a little script here. Okay. And uh, camera follow. Okay. And I'm gonna take that script, and you see, okay, here we can see um, if the camera position, if the character's position is more than 10, okay, we're gonna then follow. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna drag and drop that on my uh, script. I'm gonna drag and drop that on my uh, game object here. Mm -hmm. Okay, what's my character? This is my character here, okay. So that character is just a variable that you have in that script, which yeah. we see in the code. Yes, so the character will run here, but of course the camera starts to follow at a certain point here, okay? Uh, we could uh, start to tweak the script that it actually follows exactly that point here in the script here. So, uh, 
So we could uh, start to change those variables and expose them. But I, I know we're in a little bit uh, five minute time uh, constraint here. Mm -hmm. So what we're gonna do is just gonna uh, uh, focus on the uh, pooling uh, to make an endless render the game. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, later on, we can then come back to this and uh, work more with that or make an extended movie file for the community on it, uh, everything. So we're going to take the camera and just make it a, a child of the character. Just movie. for now, just to yeah. move along the lesson. Yeah. So what we want to do is we want to start to pull this. We want to make this an endless uh, render game. Mm -hmm. okay, how can I do that? Okay. I'm going to take uh, this, uh, this object okay, and I put it as a zero. I'm going to take another one. That's we'll the one that we named prefab earlier. Yeah. But we, know, uh, we didn't actually make it a prefab yet. Exactly. It's not a prefab. Okay. Um, for this case, we don't need to make it actually a prefab. I'm, I'm pretty sure that uh, Adam uh, and Matt will cover that uh, really in depth. So what we're going to do is here, we're going to take this object and we're going to duplicate it and we're going to call it one. Okay. And I move this object and I place it here. Okay. Okay. Place it nicely there. Make sure it's all lined up. Yeah, we can use snapping. <laughs> uh, I'm going to duplicate this and I'm going to call it two. Okay. So now we have three different yes. versions. Yeah. Why is that? Okay. And I'm going to move it up to here. Okay. What we're going to do is when my character runs here over the screen, the character starts to run in the first level. Okay. Mm -hmm. The first uh, prefab here. Then when it hits here, uh, I'm going to make here a trigger. When it hits that trigger, I'm going to move that object to there. Then this object uh, will be here. Then I can say, the moment I hit, uh, I'm going to put a trigger here, mm -hmm. like an, an object that I, when I hit it, I will move this object six units forward or ten units forward. Okay. Uh, why I put that object here? I could put it here. So I'm going to move them each time this length uh, forward. Okay, uh, because then I have to put this object behind it and I just want to make it super fast for myself mm -hmm. that I don't have to put objects behind or in the front, just move things forward. Just make it clear. Yeah. So I'm going to go back here to my menu. Okay. And uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to make a trigger in this uh, prefab here. Okay. And this prefab too, I'm going to delete it for the moment because I'm going to make exactly the same prefab for it. So I'm going to create here and uh, let's say we can do a 3D object, a cube, okay? Place it here and uh, scale this object. Okay. So that could be my trigger. That's, that's the object I have to hit. And I'm gonna say, move this object forward. Okay. So I'm gonna call it trigger. Okay. And I take that trigger object and I'm gonna make it a child of my prefab. Mm -hmm. So when I move that uh, prefab, that trigger moves with it. Take that trigger here, okay? And now we're gonna take here a script. I have uh, somewhere a script called pooling here. And you could just make this an empty game object and add a physics 2D collider on it. Yeah, exactly. So in the script here, we're gonna say on 3D, on trigger, enter 2D. When that object enters that object, mm -hmm. you're gonna have to uh, do something then. We're gonna do this, okay? So we're gonna take that script and I'm gonna put it on the trigger, okay? Now that script here, let's go back. Uh, pooling. Okay. So, um, first thing we're going to do here, we're going to declare an object, a game object, outside. So, in any object in my scene. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to move it uh, 72 units uh, forward. I can, I, I can later on tweak that. Okay. So, you're just changing the X position of the previous prefab. Yeah. So, what we're going to do is this trigger. I uh, will take this object, but I want to keep this object because I have here nicely the entrances and everything. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do, we're going to take this uh, prefab and I'm going to duplicate it and place it here. Trigger and all. Yeah. And that trigger, what will I, tr what, what will I move forward? Um, oh, this. You're going to rename that prefab to prefab 02. Yeah. yeah, it's just going to better make it uh, clear for me. Make this, it more clear in this Yeah, scripting. this one too. Yeah, and this one uh, will be one. Okay, yeah. yeah. So I'm going to select here my trigger, and what will I move forward? This object. Mm -hmm. So the trigger. Uh, or the trigger for two will want yeah. prefab one, and vice so versa. So I'm drag and drop it in here. Okay. And then I had something here from the fuel can and the laser. Let's uh, look at that. I'm going to go here to my uh, pooling script. Okay. What I'm going to do is randomly 
I will activate the fuel can or the laser. Saying them the true or false. Yeah. So they're always going to be in the level, but they may not be active in that copy of the level. Exactly. So here we're gonna take here my trigger. Okay, and what I'm gonna do, the fuel can, the laser here, I'm gonna put it here. And you're just the dragging fuel can. and dropping to match. Yeah. The fuel can and the object will be this one. Okay, and then here in my trigger, this one is just the opposite. It's the fuel can from here and the laser from the other one. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now my character when I press play, okay, what we're gonna see is we're gonna run and we start to uh, tumble here, okay? Why is that? Uh, because this has to be, object has to be a trigger. Uh, right now- uh, You're uh, just colliding with it. Yeah. So I'm gonna select them both and I'm gonna both set them to, uh, I'm gonna select them here and say this is a trigger. Mm -hmm. You need to set a box 2D uh, trigger too, or a 2D. Yes, trigger. yes, exactly. So we're gonna remove this components and we're gonna say here, this is actually add a component, physics 2D. Because just for fun, you made a 3D object, but it still needs a 2D collider on the 3D object to actually collide with the other 2D. Yeah, because we use the, the, the function on, on enter 2D, mm -hmm. and our character has the 2D uh, collider on it. So it's a, it's a trigger here, and this trigger- we so that's just a checkbox and under the box collider for yeah. is trigger? Correct. Now, what's the difference between a trigger and a normal collider? Okay, when it's a normal collider, uh, it will collide and hit it against it. Mm -hmm. If it's a trigger- It's like our floor, it'll stop. Yeah. And uh, the trigger basically will just go through it. The trigger is supposed to say, okay, you can on trigger enter and evoke uh, the scripts. So doing some code, but not actually yeah. stopping the physics object yeah. anyway. So we're gonna add a 2D box collider to here and also uh, a trigger. Okay, so press play. And what we're gonna see is here, we're gonna keep running now. And okay, there is something there. I think it's tripping you up when you go from uh, one to the yes. other. Yes, so what we're gonna do is uh, select our character here, and a very uh, simple trick is here, fix the angle. Set that to true, fixed angle to true. Yeah, so that cannot roll more our character. So press play, okay, gonna jump here a little bit, and I'm gonna go here, here, we're gonna hit the trigger here, and now we see is here the object move to there, but exactly the same, uh, uh, so, uh, move this just this distance uh, forward. Mm -hmm. So in script you should uh, change it uh, maybe to uh, way more. Um, so we're just going to check here in script here. Uh, this trigger uh, pulling script. So we have the script here, and uh, we should then uh, basically change those values here, the 72, uh, to move uh, much. Uh, to start one uh, ahead of time. Yeah, we should uh, uh, multiply by two. Pre-bake the script to go to that position of that first one. Well, it's just a, it takes a, it takes this object. Yeah. Okay. And it acts, it moves it uh, 72 units uh, forward, basically. Mm. Okay. So okay, just going to check here. This the this one, this uh, trigger, will do this uh, prefab two. If you can that and it has to uh, move it, uh, so what well, which actually it has to move, if I have this uh, prefab, okay, this prefab two, so right now it's in uh, 56, and it should go to, uh, so it should be about 50 units forward, I think, okay, let me just check here, click here, we hit this, oh, jump here, we hit the prefab, okay, yes, and what happens is our prefab two, Went, uh, way it went too a little far. bit too far. Way too far. So we should. But this uh, is something that you know you could tweak as part of your code later on and make it yeah. sure it lines up exactly. And you would measure how big each segment's going to be. And you can even set that as a variable in your code that you can adjust in the editor, just like the other ones, to make it exactly right. Yeah. So um, I think we only have two minutes left, or I think we're two minutes over. So okay. I so think we might have to cut short here. Yeah. What we're we gonna do? Let's uh, let's open the project here and let's go uh, quickly in depth over there. Okay. So you're just showing the final version, uh, what, yeah, we're gonna what, what it would look like after you, you know, tweak the scripts, made yeah. it all lined up exactly. Uh, and also one thing we didn't get to cover was uh, adding the scripts to the pickup objects itself, like the laser and the yeah. hand that when you hit it, it'll add points or yeah. uh, restart the game. So what you see is here, the character now will I put the, the colliders invisible mm -hmm. and then it moves this object to there. When I hit the collider. And it's lined up exactly right, yeah. so it, it looks seamless to the player. Yeah. And then how we do the pickup object, it's really simple. Let me go here to the uh, pickup objects, like I'm gonna say here, the fuel can. Okay, uh, we add a simple script here. No, we add it actually to the character. Okay, to our character here, and we have a script here, pickup. 
Okay, and it's a really simple script. Okay, where on trigger enter, mm -hmm. if it's a can, it checks the object that I'm, I'm colliding with 